Welcome. Well, you are at home with Jim and Joy, and you are an important part of our EWTN family. You know, we would love to hear from you. So send us an email with your question or comment to Jim and Joy at EWTN. Dot com. Well, a blessed Monday to you all. Today we have a wonderful guest, a beautiful face that is so familiar to you all on radio and in television. We have John Nett Williams who is with us today. You might know her as the host of Women of Grace. You could go to her great website, Women of Grace. Dot com and she just did the great coverage with Doug on the World Meeting of Families, all that yeah. coverage from Dublin, Ireland. Staff was wonderful, Excellent I'm sure coverage. there in Ireland, here, so many people made that happen, thanks uh, to all of them. It was great. Which we wanted to coverage. mention today, uh, just, it's so wonderful to go to Mass, uh, and it's wonderful to hear the Word of God and it's wonderful to read the Word of God. I got to read the Old Testament lesson this Sunday. And I thought it was so apropos, so appropriate for the time that we, in the season we're in, in the church, where there's so much upheaval, we're all grieving, praying uh, regarding the, the scandal uh, in the church. And then we had this reading from the Old Testament where Joshua gathers all the tribe together. And uh, he stands before them and he has the elders and the leaders and the judges and all the officers, they all line up before God. And Joshua says to them, basically, decide if you want to serve the gods that your fathers had uh, on the other side, uh, you know, before they really worshiped the Lord. Or do you want the gods of the Amorites? Or are you going to serve the Lord? He said, as for me and my house, we, we are going to serve the Lord. And then the people responded and said, you know, far be it from us to want to serve false gods. You know, we saw with our own eyes what God has done for us. And they say, we too will serve the Lord. And then we had the gospel lesson where Jesus is speaking about, this is my body, this is my blood, the true presence. And people begin to leave. And then Jesus turns to his, his apostles, Peter in particular, and says, do you want to leave too? Another time of decision, just like the time of Joshua, another Joshua, Jesus stands up and says, what do you want to do? And Peter says, Lord, where will we go? You have the words of eternal life. And we're in a time of decision. And every, every household, every individual, every layperson, every priest, every deacon, every bishop, the Pope himself, everybody should say, we're going to serve the Lord. And we're going to serve everything that the Catholic Church holds to be true. We are here to serve the Lord. Time of renewal in the church. Well, and every time when you have a crisis in your personal family, or if you have a crisis in your church or a crisis at work, you have to reset. Right? right? You have to hit the reset button and say, who are we? What are we doing? Right. How are we going to get through this storm? How are we going to get through this trial and this tribulation? When, when and we all need to say, as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Yep. We're going to reset who we are. Right, we're not just going to believe. We're not just going to have it on paper. We're not just going to read the catechism. We're going to serve the Lord and no other gods. We're going to serve him in our lives, our marriage, and our family. We'll be right back with Johnette Williams. It's going to be a great time together. Don't go away. There's plenty more to come. We will be right back. because in just two short weeks we're going to have an exciting change right here on At Home with Jim and Joy. Beginning Monday, September 10th, we invite you to send us your questions and we will answer them right here on the air and it will be a time you could call in. It's going to be every Monday so we're going to be like we're just sitting down having a friendly discussion over some cup of coffee they promised me. So if you have questions about marriage or family, pro-life issues or you just want to yeah. know about us, give us a jingle, send us an email and we will be here to answer all your questions. It's going to be fun. You I'm looking that, forward you to it. You said that so well. And I really do hope that it's an atmosphere as if you're right here with us 
and, and just to ask you a question or make a comment and you can get to know us better and we can walk out this faith together because we're family. Well, it will be fun. I'm looking forward Amen. to it. Amen. We have Jeanette Williams here with us, host of Women of Grace. It's womenofgrace.com. What an incredible history in, in your own life. I mean, and, and I hope we can get to that just at some point. I think I've read just reading your materials. It was like 87 or 88 with radio and TV. Is that yes. right? I mean, you've been at this a long time. <laughs> well, you know, I, I do feel like a pioneer really in Catholic communications because yeah. in 1987, there were only seven Catholic radio stations in the United States of America. And of those seven, only two of them were being used for evangelization purposes. And then of course, Mother with her magnanimous offer to pick up all of the programming off of satellite, uh, she encouraged individuals to start their own AM FM stations. Right. And so we've watched Catholic Radio really blossom in all of these years. And it's thrilling to have been there at what I would call, you know, the very early days of uh, contemporary Catholic Radio. Vatican Radio goes back much further, of course, uh, and to watch it grow and develop. So yeah. it's been a great grace. And I started here uh, right in this very studio back in 1988 with EWTN. So. I've been pretty much of a fixture around here for a long Bless time. Heart. So you've really been able to see the network grow, yes. right? It's gotten better. Yes. It certainly has gotten better. And, you know, like Mother used to say, we don't know what we're doing, but we're getting better at it, right? <laughs> yeah. She used to yeah. say that so well. She did. And how, what, what change have you seen that you think, we are getting better. Well, you know, it, it's, it's been interesting to watch the growth of the network, the development of it, and also the look of the network change. And uh, in the very early days, you know, everybody was learning their jobs around here. And, uh, you know, we've got, we've got some people, one, one of the guys on camera here, Roger Stokes, I've known since the very yeah. beginning. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, lots of the people that are here have been here from the beginning. And, and so we were all learning you know, what this process was like. And I think that the, the biggest changes that I've seen is the uh, uh, capacity to communicate the word better uh, through all manner of media mm -hmm. and all of the accoutrements that are necessary, set design, of course, and all of that. Uh, but, but also to watch the, the network grow and expand into other platforms. So we've got television, we've got radio, we're out there virtually in every form of social mm -hmm. media. We have news. Uh, the news, news. I, oh, yeah. now that is a yeah. huge huge yeah. piece that didn't yes. exist then. Mm -hmm. So it's been, it, it's been lovely to watch, just yeah. lovely to watch. Yeah. It's well, been a great, great, uh, what would I want to say, uh, a, a great privilege for me to participate in this great work of the Holy Spirit that all happened because Mother Angelica said yes. yes. You know, she's right. very Marian in that way, mm -hmm. right? Uh, beautiful things have grown because of that yes. And you've had a name change? I have. Tell us about that. Big, big change in my life too. Yeah. Wonderful. Well, you know, I was married to my husband Anthony for almost 34 years, and he uh, passed away uh, from terminal brain cancer, a glioblastoma multiforme four, which has taken John uh, McCain's life and okay. Ted Kennedy's life and and so many others, uh, uh, Joe Biden's son's life, for example. A very very virulent cancer. There's it was a fatal diagnosis, and that's the way the doctor put it to mm -hmm. us. Uh, I was widowed for 11 years and felt as though, well, that was the state in life that God had chosen for me uh, for the rest of my life. Uh, but you know, he is full of surprises, yes. this God of ours, yes. you know. And my surprise came in the package of a great big tall six foot four man <laughs> <laughs> who is general manager of EWTN Radio, Jack Williams. Jack Williams. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, we began to court just about a year ago now. And uh, you know, he, he invited, he, he asked permission to court me. Uh, and he said, you know what that means, Johnette? It means that we have an eye towards the altar, and if at any point in time either one of us feels that's not where this relationship is headed, then you know we'll end it and, and, and we'll go back to a very professional relationship. Mm -hmm. And he caught me quite by surprise on every level. Uh, and um, I soon realized that God had something really remarkable for me yes. mm -hmm. at this point in my life. And so we were married on May 25th. So of this year. Beautiful. Perfect. Yeah. Well, congratulations. <laughs> Thank you. I'm, I'm giddy about it. <laughs> and you should be. Yeah. I am, yes. You should be. Marriage is great. We love being married. <laughs> we really do. 41 yeah. years. We just love being married. Jim's my best friend. Yeah, well, you know, and it's an interesting thing. God does have vocational paths for us, right? Mm -hmm. And and they can, they can change as life moves forward. But typically, I think we find ourselves the best that we can be mm -hmm. in the vocational path that God's chosen for us, whether that's priesthood, 
religious life, the married state, the single life. God has, has a plan. And uh, we just have to be open to it and willing to change along the way. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'd love to unpack that a little bit more. Maybe we could do that in the second show that we'll have. Whatever you yeah, would like to do. Yeah, how you, you came to that place. I'm just delighted to sit here with the two of you. <laughs> uh, I have some holy conversation going on here. Usually we just pass each other in the hall. <laughs> Hi, bye, see exactly, you. Exactly, yeah. yeah. And, and that's probably one of the you know suppositions that I think that many of our viewers make is mm -hmm. that you know we all know each other very, very well. But we have um, hosts, and I was doing this mm -hmm. until recently, flying in all of the time and flying out again. Uh, so when we do have a moment to sit together, yeah, it's true. lovely. It's wonderful to do that with, with the family here. Yeah. Um, you know, I opened up the time just speaking about what the scriptures, you know, meant to mm -hmm. me in terms of, as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. And, and Peter saying, Lord, where, where else do we go? And it's been helpful, you know, part of the process in dealing with the scandal in yes. the church at this time, all the pus, so to speak, that's coming out. and. I'm sure you hear from so many people with your radio show and TV and, and you do events and so on and, and people are really hurting, Yes. angry, hurting, hopeful to some degree mm -hmm. and just wondering what you're seeing, what you're hearing, you know, your own personal reflections on where we are at this juncture uh, in the church and what we need to be about at this time. Well, you know, I, I have to say, Jim, I was so happy with the way in which you approached uh, that reading from today in light of everything that's going on. And if we go back and we look through some of the readings uh, in, in this past week, mm -hmm. I, they have been so yes. specific. Right. It's near scary. And this is one of the things that we have to realize that God's in the midst of all of it. And I was sharing with our uh, radio listeners today that um, I, you know, I had a beautiful moment on Saturday morning. I was having some private prayer time outside and beautiful day here in, in uh, the Birmingham area. And I was watching these beautiful, I was looking at this beautiful tree and the breeze going through the tree. And I noticed that the trunk was almost invisible, except in one or two little spots where you could see it clearly. And I said, you know, isn't that how our lives are, right? You know, we have all this foliage around us, so yeah. to speak, which is the everyday circumstances and situations, the vicissitudes, the joys, the, the sorrows, you know, the busyness, the, the responsibilities and duties. But running through it all in a life of faith is that trunk, mm -hmm. and that trunk is our Lord Jesus Christ. Right. It was a beautiful meditation for me. And we are in a time of decision. You know, we have got to make a decision for Holy Mother Church at this time. Mm -hmm. That is our job as the lay faithful yeah. today. Uh, we have the capacity to help to balance this bark of Peter as it goes through these turbulent waters. But we have got to do it with a steadfastness of heart and perseverance, uh, all the while admitting that, you know, yes, there are emotions, you know. Yeah. Something's been taken from us, mm -hmm. and we have to grieve that. You know, and yes, anger is going to come, but we ought not to act out of it. So, you know, healing is possible. Uh, one of my favorite passages that I've remembered at so many junctures in my life, going through my difficulties and trials, Joel 2.25, Father God speaks through his prophet and says, I will restore what the locusts have eaten. We need to cling to that passage yeah, and know restoration is coming, and we all are going to be part of that restoration. Right. Yeah. That's right. You know, when uh, we came into the church in 2003, right after another priest scandal, and our children were like, Dad, why are we going to become Catholic? Mm -hmm. And Jim said, well, you found out that there aren't perfect people there, but we have the opportunity to be as holy as we can be. Mm -hmm. And that's why we're going, because they have all the truth, they have all the authority, as corrupt as some men and women might be in the church, it's true, and it's God's bride. And so we said, okay, we're going, and it was like, what? You know, but Jim said, this is the church's finest hour because all the hidden things are being revealed, all the secret things are being made known, and now is the time to say, do I leave, or do I lead? Do I show up, do I pray, do I fast, do I pray for my priest? Do I send him a love note, encourage him as they stand there? And I mean, they're so, they're, they're, our priests are so distraught. Yes. You know, um, I heard Monsignor Pope say yesterday on the radio, he said, you know, 30 years ago, I took a vow to chastity. He said, I've been faithful for 30 years. And you know, that is the majority That's of our right. priests and our clergy and our bishops. That's the majority. But there is a minority where the tentacles seem to have gone all over and contaminated and 
done awful things to victims, mm -hmm. to, and we can't forget the people who have suffered the most. Yes, where, oh, how could this happen? But what about the victims? Yes. Right? Yes. Yeah, and, 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 and I think that that is, is a, a tremendously valid concern. And when we look at these cases, frankly, these cases are old cases. Mm -hmm. um, th th these are not new, uh, new sufferings that people uh, are, are uh, are being thrust upon people today. If we look at what the statistics tell us, um, I think it was in 2009, there were six cases, only six cases, and in uh, 2011, there were seven cases, that's it, uh, on the part of, of Catholic clergy. So a lot of this is old. And you know, one of the things that I want to talk about um, with regard to our women of grace and, and to communicate is that God wants to heal us. Mm -hmm. You know, it, there is there is no excuse for this kind of behavior. There's absolutely no way to excuse it. That isn't what it's about. But God does want to set us free from the wounds of the heart that assail us, mm -hmm. and that healing is absolutely yes. possible. I think yes. we have to take a break at this point. We're going to hold you over for the next segment. Uh, Johnette Williams, host of Women of Grace, is here with us. It's womenofgrace.com. She'll be back with us. Don't go away. There's plenty more to come as we work this through as a family. We'll be right back. Well, today we have EWTN's own Jeanette Williams with us today. But we, before we continue our discussion, we're going to go straight to Rome to hear from Joan Lewis. Now, Joan, Pope Francis encourages us all to engage in family prayer. Well, greetings from Rome, and it's really good to be back with you as we talk about this topic of, of prayer, of religion in the family. And almost three years ago to the very day in a general audience catechesis, and this was just before the start of the second Synod of Bishops on the Family, Pope Francis spoke about the family and about prayer. And he said, a heart which is home to affection for God makes a prayer of an unspoken thought or an invocation before a holy image or a kiss blown to the church. And he said it's beautiful when mothers teach their little children to blow kisses to Jesus and to his mother Mary. What tenderness there is in this. In that moment, the child's heart is transformed into a place of prayer. And in that same uh, catechesis, the Pope said, the spirit of prayer gives time back to God. It, ste it steps away from the obsession of a life that always seems to be lacking free time. It rediscovers the peace of necessary thing and discovers the joy of unexpected gifts. He then offered Mary and Martha to us as examples, as guides for prayer. He said one day, Martha learned that the work of hospitality, though important, is not everything, but that listening to the Lord, as Mary did, was the really essential thing, the best kind of time. And then the Pope asked a number of questions. For example, he said, do we pray together as a family? If the answer is yes, it's Jesus who comes among us, as he was with the family of Mary and Martha and Lazarus. And importantly, the Pope urged parents to teach their children how to pray and teach them, please, to make a good sign of the cross. And of course, what he added was that all these shared moments in a family, it can be leisure, it can be vacation, it can be holidays, it can be prayer time, they do bind the family together. and he. If we had families like this, we know we're, we'd all be better off. Society would be better off. So beautiful words from Pope Francis three years ago. However, also beautiful words just days ago when he was in Dublin for the World Meeting of Families. So time's up in Rome. Back to you at home. Joan, thanks so much. And it just reminds me that you know, the Lord's not looking necessarily for people who teach about prayer or write about prayer. He's looking for people who pray, yeah. <laughs> actually pray, who pray with others, pray with their family, pray with their husband, and who actually do the work of prayer. 
Yeah, and we were talking about, you know, means of restoration at this very difficult time and how all of it seems to have fit so neatly into uh, so many of the readings, what we're experiencing mm -hmm. today. And Joan mentions, you know, the world meeting of families that just happened in Dublin. And, and prayer is the answer. Mm -hmm. You know, prayer is the answer. And teaching our children to pray uh, and ourselves, availing ourselves of, of the time that's necessary yeah. to spend with the Lord is one of the ways in which we can begin to uh, be restored yes. through yes. this time of great tragedy yes. and suffering yes. that we're going through. You know, I was thinking about sacred scripture here, and, you know, Peter figures so prominently today um, in the reading, and we look at what Jesus said to Peter uh, at the moment that he called him rock, and says, and upon this rock I will build my church. And Jesus says, and the gates of hell will not right. prevail against mm -hmm. her. Mm -hmm. And he told us that for a reason, mm -hmm. because the gates of hell would try, That's yeah. right. but they will not. Mm -hmm. And we must not let those gates of hell prevail against us and cause us to lose faith in Holy Mother Church. Right. And Fulton Sheen said, the devil will have his hour, but God will have his day. Mm -hmm. And so we have to know, we have to, we are the church militant. We're connected to the church triumphant. They're praying for us that we too would finish our race, that during this time we would be fasting, we would be praying, we would be people of hope and truth and healing each other and everyone else as we pull them along the way. That's it's exactly times true. like this especially, you know, Joy and I try to pray every morning together and sometimes we're praying separately then we come together but you know of late it's just been like Lord I'm so happy that I'm gonna have this time with you and, and this prayers that we pray and everything else but I just want to be still yes yeah, I want to be still and know your God that you will be exalted among the nations and, and the earth and and within the church we gotta be still we gotta go to that mm. prayer of quiet or prayers with sighs and groans too deep for words the Holy Spirit discerns the things of the Spirit so sometimes you just have to exhale and sigh and groan and or let's a degree of anger come up mm -hmm. say Lord I'm just giving this to you because if it just keeps working on me it's, it's destructive it doesn't do anything mm -hmm. so I think just the prayer of, of solitude and, and quiet and being before the Lord that we could be renewed and that we can know that the ultimate outcome is assured the gates of hell will not prevail against the church she will prevail yeah yeah I'm thinking too that uh, this is a very important time for us to safeguard ourselves mm -hmm. you know to guard the perimeter of our hearts and our souls because you know we were we're all beleaguered by this right. you know we're all saddened by this I mean there's not a word that's deep enough to express the emotion uh, and, and it, it's appalling yeah. and it's frustrating and we feel helpless in the midst of it and so when we are emotionally down like this yeah. this is the time that he comes like a, a roaring lion mm -hmm. he's prowling about he wants to seek who it is that he can devour and he's going to sow those seeds of doubt discouragement uh, in our hearts and he's going to try to take advantage of us so we need to be very Amen. careful right. Janet thank you so much for making time to be with us and we look forward to Wednesday and sharing further thank you for your wisdom for your insights and simply for who you are hope that you've been blessed uh, during this time hope that you're filled with all hope and peace in believing through the power of the Holy Spirit the outcome is assured Jesus Christ is Lord and he's coming back for a church spotless and beautiful Keep it on EWTN. Bye now.